This is the ascent portion of our mission. And the countdown of the Cape just went flawlessly. We were really, really pleased with the way things went down, went on down there. The engine's starting. You can see the shock waves come out of the throats of the, the nozzles. The nozzles vibrate. The engines get up and stable in about six seconds. Uh, solid rocket motors fire, and, and we're off. And uh, for a new guy doing this the first time, it's really a thrill. And that thing feels like being on a rough train while those solid rocket motors are firing. If you all have been on a rough railroad track, that's about what it feels like. And uh, it's a very interesting ride. You can function normally. And right before we lifted off, Crip said, get ready for the ride of your lives. And he was right. It's the ride of your life. It's, it's, a, it's still really a, a big thrill on your third time, too. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, one, of the, one of the neat things about this mission was we're going to do direct insertion into orbit. So we didn't do an orbital maneuvering system one burn right after the main engine's cut off. So we're going right into orbit off the pad. And we're going up 250 miles. So the trajectory and everything was a little bit different. And it made, uh, made a real interesting ride out of it. The uh, solid rocket motors, the engines, and everything just are magnificent. We didn't have a glitch the whole ascent, which is really nice. You don't want any glitches when this kind of stuff's going on outside your window. <laughs> we all kept on watching Crip make sure this is the way it's really supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, solid rocket motors separated. They saw the uh, plumes from the uh, separation motors. Those fog up our windows pretty good up in front. They, they put a haze on the, on the forward windows when they go off, and you get a nice flash in the windows, but it's a nice smooth separation. Just letting the bees out of their little house here, kind of. We did this oh, a couple times a day. It was uh, good entertainment, if nothing else, and we were watching their progress on their uh, on their honeycomb. Yeah, we were made sure that there was no way they were going to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I checked that first thing. <laughs> okay, this is uh, more of the housework. I did a lot of a lot of the cooking and bottle washing, and uh, if you look out the window there, you can see the snow going by. We're doing a water dump at the same time. Uh, cooking a meal is about like doing it on the ground there. This, is a, bank, this is a bank shot by Crippen. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get my eggs in my mouth. <laughs> we do. You do tend to eat in space like you do on the ground. Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us do. <laughs> At least, at least I eat in space. I eat like I do on the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> so did Ox. So did Ox. <laughs> that was the real rotating grapple over. Yeah. Yeah, we gave us time to play up there, too. Yeah. Well, in this uh, particular sequence, we're showing how we prepare a meal. And uh, we divided these tasks up uh, among all the crew members. Uh, Dale usually wound up doing breakfast because nobody was quick enough for him. Uh, <laughs> making um, meals is a fairly uh, easy task on orbit. All you had to do is essentially like, <laughs> it's very good, uh, essentially like backpacking. You essentially add water to, to the food, and um, it was very good. I'll let uh, Rick describe what we're doing here. Well, at the risk of endorsing a product, that's uh, interesting. Uh, physical uh, demonstration on orbit of the fact that uh, things really are weightless. That's how the crew was rewarded when we did something uh, properly. <laughs> Rick would release another handful. <laughs> Since Anna did more things right than anybody, she got most of them. <laughs> Dave, uh, on orbit, described uh, Dr. Rowan as, uh, as large in personality but uh, diminutive in stature. Whenever his personality got a little bit too large, we would uh, stuff him away in a locker for a few hours. And uh, then when a task needed to be done, it was my job to go, out, go down and get him out. This was a somewhat unpleasant task for me, but uh, but Joe Joe seemed to like the freedom at times. And the hard part was putting him back in there again later once we got him. And here's uh, Gordon getting ready for one of the many uh, burns with our smaller orbital maneuvering system rocket engines. Here you see us maneuvering attitude and a small. Uh, attitude uh, jets firing. 
We did an experiment so you could appreciate the acceleration we get out of these rocket engine firings. We put eight ounces of water on the mid-deck, and here you see it traveling across. <laughs> Dr. Bartow is catching it. We also tried to sleep through some of these burns, and we staged this next scene to show you what it felt like in the bunk. <laughs> that hurt. That was a great train wreck. <laughs> Believe it or not, some of them slept through those once they got used to it. Here we're setting up for an on-orbit ohms burn. We're getting some things ready in the uh, mid-deck. There's the ohms engines firing out the back, and now watch what happens in the mid-deck. <laughs> That's one sixteenth of a G. Each of the ohms engines is one foot per second squared for a total of uh, two feet per second squared, and that one sixteenth of a G felt, felt like a lot to us after being up there for uh, three or four days. And you can see the acceleration on the tape. It keeps wanting to go back towards the aft bulkhead because we're accelerating forward towards the left of the screen. Here we can see the left Ohm's engine burn. And that's just to start up. The burn uh, lasts for a little while. And this is what it looks like in the mid-deck. Jerry made it right into the airlock, and uh, we collected all those pieces. Here's a picture of Gordo uh, establishing himself in that area. And why don't you move the coat there, Gordo, and get it out of the way. Thank okay. you. And, of course, one of the things Gordo had to do was uh, brush his hair every morning. <laughs> Eating was a real pleasure, uh, of course. You know. It's impossible to knock your milk off the table up there, kiddos. It's, there's no way to get in trouble with Mom. Uh, you just uh, leave things float around, and when you want them, you just grab them out of thin air, and. Uh, you can eat standing on your head or uh, however you please. Here's our, here's our guru here. This is a story doing his... <laughs> Demonstrating what happens if you ever drop a cat, it always ends up on its four feet, no matter what attitude. And it's We've had a lot doing. of discussions about how this works, how yes, you can well, move around. He's like not that. shoveling the air. <laughs> it, it's actually... He's... he's <laughs> <laughs> you want well, me to do it here? The, the way, the one on the right, of course, is a magnet, and the one on the left is just a pencil, and we had no idea they were going to decide to mate. <laughs> we're still waiting the results, you know? Gordo practicing his uh, landing technique, get ready for re-entry. <laughs> Looks like we're lost in space there. Well, we get up in the morning and, uh, you know, brush our teeth and comb our hair and the rest of that stuff here. Some of the crew equipment we had was limited, so uh, we had to share it. <laughs> You're not allowed to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this sequence we call Hair Wars. <laughs> As you might expect, the commander won. <laughs> of course. I'm not dumb enough to get the hairbrush away from the commander. <laughs> this set, next scene is not, is not staged. This is a real teleprinter message. We set a new record on this flight for the amount of uh, teleprinter messages sent up. Uh, every single rev uh, on the night side, they send up a new detailed plan for the... Uh, scientists here to accomplish on the next solar pass. And that was an actual message, uh, all full of fine print, that fortunately for me, all I had to do is uh, take it up to the upper deck and pass it out to the people who really had to read it. We uh, recorded a new space first on this flight. We ran out of teleprinter paper after five and a half days. It's the first time this happened. And Story Musgrave changed out the paper roll in space for the first time. But the, the hairbrush one wasn't staged either. <laughs> we had to devise a number of uh, exercise routines. balancing act here. 
Now, not many of you can do this right here. He doesn't put them on one leg at a time like everybody else. As, as soon as I uh, get this down, I'm going to get a Dorothy Hamill wig and try out for the ice cream. And, of course, Marines aren't happy unless they do their push-ups every day. That wasn't too tough, so, uh, you know, look, one arm. And if you want to, you can do foot-ups. Now, if you really got frustrated, you could do this. Here we are sitting down for supper. Uh, we had trays. You can see some of the food stuck to the back there. Uh, we had trays that we could position on our laps, Velcro, and then uh, set our food in them. As Steve pointed out, this uh, zero gravity adds new meaning to the term past the potatoes. They float them all the way across the cabin. The menu was uh, quite varied and uh, <laughs> really pretty good. People accused me, we had color code, and people accused me of always having my color on everything. <laughs> Exercise was part of our daily routine on orbit, uh, just like it is back here on Earth. Getting set up on the treadmill takes a little bit longer on orbit, but it feels just as good to quit. And our sleep arrangements looked a lot like uh, summer camp. A little bit of bunks here and there. Two of us slept anchored to lockers, two of us slept strung across the room, and two of us slept on the wall. And you notice that in zero G, when you relax, your arms tend to float up. It was very comfortable. Mm -hmm. We didn't always sleep with the night light on. Well, it's uh, constantly fascinating just to watch the way objects behave in zero gravity. Here we have uh, a set of gyro-stabilized binoculars. There was a little bit too much friction in them, so they were actually a bit gyro-unstabilized. <laughs> but uh, still, with 14 power binoculars, uh, it was just amazing what we could see on the ground. And uh, of course, I also enjoyed what I could see up in the sky, since I'm uh, uh, an astronomer. Uh, we also carried some uh, science demonstration objects, commonly known as uh, TOYS. Um, this uh, was done primarily to uh, make some educational uh, footage, which uh, we can use and distribute to science teachers throughout the country. Here, Bo uh, forgot to spin the gyroscope up, and somehow it just didn't, didn't stay stable. Uh, so we're going to give him another chance, and uh, here he's going to get it spinning. There we go. Of course, the uh, principle of gyroscopic stability has been around a long time. We use it for navigation. Our satellites use it when they uh, come out of the cargo bay. Um, but of course, without, the, uh, without gravity and just being able to float it free here, you can study the behavior uh, of the gyroscope and, and watch the way it moves around in, in a way that we never get a chance to do in, in laboratories on the Earth. I'm sure all of you have uh, held a, a gyroscope on a string or on your fingers, and after a while, as it spins down, uh, the force of gravity uh, starts to torque it, and it starts to process around. Of course, that, that never happens in, in zero gravity. You can keep playing with it almost up, up to the moment where, uh, where it is not spinning at all, and it still stays stable. In fact, it was just a constant source of fascination, all the different things you could do with these uh, very ordinary devices. This is a little magnetic wheel that I'm using. Uh, normally on the Earth, you start this with gravity. I found it was pretty easy to start it up using centrifugal force. Uh, this one, as long as I was holding it, uh, behaved pretty much the way it did on the Earth. But as soon as you let it go, then it does all sorts of neat things. And here comes Mr. Yo-Yo. Uh, <laughs> We had, so we, I, I've had a lot of discussions with physicist friends of mine about whether the yo-yo was going to work, uh, and it worked fabulous. You could do it fast, you could do it slow, you could do it uh, to the ceiling. Uh, that's the famous oi-oi. Uh, Dave did flying saucers around the moon. He's a real champ, and if they don't let him into the yo-yo association of America, there's just no justice in the world. Um, putting the jacks here, uh, there was constant... <laughs> constant danger of, of massive explosions if the ball came back in the wrong place. Uh, we, we managed to uh, go through without ever losing the jacks, and although it's not on film, Ray did manage to do her twelvesies by the end of the uh, flight. 
if you uh, if you let a, a paper airplane just uh, float, uh, it's pretty much carried away by the air currents in the shuttle, as you see here. And so it really doesn't take very much force just to start it on the most beautiful flight that you've ever seen of uh, any paper glider. Hope you like our home movies so far. <laughs> the paddle ball behaved a lot like it does on Earth in that you can uh, paddle it uh, in nearly any direction if you're uh, clever enough. I'm not sure I am clever enough to keep it going in, in, in each direction, <laughs> and, as you can see here. So the ins and outs, ups and downs were about the same. Uh, it's a little harder to do, uh, let's say, to do this trick on Earth. <laughs> the straightforward sort of paddle ball operation uh, uh, is much slower and it's much easier. This one is a little tougher. Uh, Jeff has here some magnetic marbles. Uh, I'm not sure how you shoot marbles in space because it's a little hard to keep them in that ring. Uh, but your shooter uh, seems to work fine. It joins right up with them all. <laughs> and it forms, uh, it forms into, a, into a toroid, as you might expect, with the magnetic lines uh, and the ma magnetism that's inherent in the marbles. If you watch carefully now, on not this, uh, not this one, but the, the one after this, as Jeff sails the marble past uh, after he repositions the, uh, his ring here with its little tail, and relative to the horizontal lines on the, on the ball cap behind him, watch what this marble does. See a curve upward as, it, as the magnetic lines of force uh, pass by the others? And here's our unofficial mascot. You might say he flipped out over this. Uh, <laughs> the rat stuff really had it. The slinky, uh, without the sag uh, that you have to contend with in uh, 1G, behaved pretty much the same as it does in 1G. Uh, you can start to see that, of course, they've set up a sine wave oscillation here which continues to be reflected back and forth, and now a double one or perhaps a triple, and perhaps within there you can also see the standing waves reflected back and forth. The centrifugal force, of course, keeps this little car going around its track. On Earth, when it gets to the top, it would, of course, fall out. In space, uh, what do you expect it's going to do? Well, with a little help from the doctor, sure enough, <laughs> it falls out. See, when you've been in space a little while, down is up and up is down. It doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't. Mission this complex requires strict discipline, uh, and uh, fortunately we had uh, a well-disciplined crew. Of course, you know, you take four guys off the farm, some of them are able to respond a little quicker and learn a little faster than others to uh, military movements. And uh, <laughs> some guys just never learn. That's crazy. I'm not we did have any more parades. <laughs> We did have a drill team, a uh, crack drill team here that we practiced every morning. Zero gravity's got to be fun. If you hadn't noticed or picked up on it by now, it's just is a, a great deal of fun. After 300 uh, hours of space flight, uh, you can really learn how to adapt yourself to zero G and, and, and do the tasks a lot more rapidly than, than uh, you ever could on the ground. And, and most of the things like stowing the cabin were, were really no problem at all. With Al some exceptions. Almost all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Cables develop a mind of their own. <laughs> this helps you understand why we didn't break the camera and beg out. <laughs> the real difficulty of this scene was holding the camera still while he was trying not to giggle at Steve. <laughs> Well, in the words of an old philosopher, it ain't over till it's over, and I guarantee it's not over yet, because we still have to land. And uh, here we are at uh, runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, good calls from the folks uh, in the air and on the ground. John Young, weather pilot. The weather was good to the north, uh, so we landed with a slight tailwind. <coughs> and uh, coming down here at uh, 300 feet, Dave deployed the landing gear. And the orbiter flew beautifully, just as we uh, trained for it to fly in the uh, shuttle training airplane. Look at the uh, vortexes being shed off the wingtips there. And when we touch down, you can see how the uh, smoke from the tires gets caught up in those vortices. Real pretty picture. Touchdown was at about 190 knots. I uh, understand about 2,700 feet down the runway. And uh, we used a total of 93 to 9,500 feet of runway during the rollout. 